Evangelist Franklin Graham went on CNN and just gave us a waterfall of falsehoods. Let's watch. Uh, there's some good guys out there that have some great ideas for this country to move this country forward. But uh, those good ideas aren't going to go anywhere without all the hand of Almighty God. And yes, I do believe in the divine hand. I believe that God has blessed this nation, that his hand has been on this nation. But we have taken God out of our country. We have taken him out of politics. We have taken him out of schools, out of the education system. And we are a broken nation. And, and it's not going to get fixed by politics. It, it's only going to be fixed, I believe, if the American people uh, turn from their sins and put their faith and trust in Almighty God. That's the only hope that I believe. So I'm going to cap all the capital steps. Next week I'll be in, uh, in South Carolina. I'll be in Georgia. I've already been up in New Hampshire. I've already been in uh, Iowa. Uh, we're going to get, uh, get ahead of the primaries where we can to encourage Christians to pray. And I want to encourage the evangelicals to get out and vote. Their voice needs to be heard. About so, 20 to 30 million evangelicals stayed home during the last election. I'm trying to get them out and get them to vote. And according to CNN, the largest group of uh, evangelicals voted in New Hampshire in the last two mm -hmm. elections. So I'm glad for that. And the question becomes, well, to vote on what basis? Is it enough to just vote for the person who seems to talk about their faith the most, Christian faith specifically, or, you know, like your own organization? Is it about what they actually do? Needs for the poor, the sick, suffering people. Is it enough just to believe in God, or is it how you live that belief that you want evangelicals to look at? No, and I appreciate you asking that question, Chris. That's a, that's a great question. Uh, there's a lot of people who talk about their faith, but you have to live it. And uh, I'm, I'm wanting uh, every voter to examine the person that they're going to vote for and how that person uh, lives their faith. But and do they stand for biblical principles? I see. I believe the Bible is the word of God from cover mm -hmm. to cover, and I believe every word of it is true. And I hope and pray that people will vote for candidates that live the word of God. So, Reverend, if a candidate says, "Look, I have my own Christian beliefs, but this is a secular society under our Constitution, and let's look at same-sex marriage. The Supreme Court has said what the law of the land is respecting uh, the equal protection of same-sex couples to get married," and I must support the law. Would I get your vote? Well, for, first of all, Chris, uh, you talk about us being a secular government, a secular society. That, that, that's only taken place in the last uh, few years. Uh, our nation was founded on biblical principles. Our uh, founding fathers recognized God. All you have to do is go through Washington and look at all of our monuments with the inscriptions to, uh, and references it's to Almighty under God. Understood. No, how about you go to the Founding Fathers' literal quotes and go to the supreme law of the land, the Constitution. Let's look at what some of them said. Thomas Jefferson said, quote, Christianity is the most perverted system that ever shone on man. Uh, more from Thomas Jefferson. There's not one redeeming feature in our superstition of Christianity. It has made one half the world fools and the other half hypocrites. Okay, that's so strong, I don't even agree with it. Tell me again how, oh, the biblical principles, Christianity, that's what it's all about. All right, Ben Franklin, quote, lighthouses are more useful than churches. Another one, the way to see by faith is to shut the eye of reason. Now we go to John Adams. This would be the best of all possible worlds if there were no religion in it. And finally, Thomas Paine, of all the tyrannies that affect mankind, tyranny in religion is the worst. No, we are not a Christian nation. If the Founding Fathers wanted to make us a Christian nation, you know what they could have done? They could have put that in the Constitution. They could have put it right there. They could have said, hey, by the way, we're a Christian nation. But how many times does the Constitution reference Christianity? Zero. The Bible? Zero. Jesus? Zero. God? Zero. The only time it even mentions religion is to say, you shall not establish a religion, which means we are a secular state. And that's only in the first sentence of the First Amendment. So, I know you didn't read it, because if you got to the first part, you would have said, fuck, I'm wrong. They got me. They got me. Hey, look at the Founding Fathers' quotes. Uh, they got me. I guess, look, they're very clear. They're not uh, super rah-rah pro-Christianity here. So, understand something, guys. Uh, people like him, it's just sheer ignorance. They argue based off of what they want to be true, as opposed to what is true. So what you do is you cherry pick the fuck out of your holy book. Only the parts that are convenient for your political ideology. 
do you act on? And the saddest thing is that even though that's the case, you still say, I believe every word of the Bible is true from cover to cover. Dude, that's not even possible. Why? The Bible, like the Quran and like other holy books, it is totally contradictory. Totally contradictory. There are good parts of it that call for peace and happiness. There are bad parts of it that call for slavery and genocide and war. And then there are flat out unscientific, factually false claims. Like, for example, in the Bible, they allude to the four corners of the earth. Well, what kind of an earth would have four corners? That's right, a flat earth. Hmm. You know, that's one that you just can't really, uh, you know, believe that. <laughs> but he says, hey, I believe it all. I believe it all. So I guess you're a flat earther. I guess you think the earth is flat. I also guess you think, since if you count up the Bible stories and go back, it means the earth is only about 6,000 years old. I guess you think the earth is 6,000 years old, even though scientists have found out through uh, radiocarbon dating and other methods that it's about 4.54 billion years old. Dude, I can, I can keep owning your punk-ass arguments all day and night here. What you believe makes absolutely no sense. The world did not flood. There was no Noah. Moses didn't even fucking exist. He didn't even exist. There was no talking snake. There was no burning bush. There was no seven-headed dragon. And you don't even abide by all the stuff that's in there, and you say you believe it cover to cover. Dude, where's your beard? It's an abomination to shave in the eyes of God. I guess you got to put yourself to death, bro. You say you believe every word of it. I didn't say it. You said it. You said it. You said it. You shaved. You cut your hair. You're not allowed to do that. Did you read the whole thing? Do you even know what the fuck it says? Do you guys know that in Catholicism specifically, on Christmas Eve, they have this tradition of eating fish? Uh, there's only one problem with that. In the Bible, it bans all shellfish. So if you're Catholic and you're eating lobster and you're eating, you know, uh, crab or whatever on, uh, Christmas Eve, as many do, you're violating what's in the fucking Bible. What are you doing? What are you doing? Have you ever had uh, body piercings or tattoos? That's also something you can't do. If you look at the Bible, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, women are supposed to cover their hair in the Bible. <laughs> so I love how people look at uh, Islam. They're like, ah, ha, ha, backwards, maybe women cover up. It actually says it in the Bible, too. You guys just ignore it. <laughs> so... Do you believe it or do you not believe it? Is your wife covered up? That bitch better cover up if she hasn't yet. Uh, did, you say you believe the Bible. I'm trying to help you out because I'm telling you what's actually in the fucking thing. She has to sleep outside in a tent when she's on her period. Did you know that one? You bet you didn't know that one. Did you know that uh, they talk about, oh, being anti-gay marriage is, is biblically correct. You know what else is biblically correct? Polygamy. I guess you're against one man, one woman, right? Because biblical marriage is polygamy. There's parts of the Bible where... Uh, Young girls drug their father and then rape him. Biblical values. Selling your daughter off into sex slavery. That's in the Bible. You in favor of that? There's abortion in the Bible. God performs abortions. Rips the fetuses out of the stomachs of the girls, uh, the women in Samaria. That's God performing abortions. It says if your wife cheats on you, she should drink bitter water and have an abortion in the Bible. It says if your wife cheats on you, abortion is the solution in the Bible. You're pro-abortion, right? No. You don't know dick about dick, even your own religion. It's pathetic.